Hi everybody, it's Gemma. Welcome back to Pampered Wolf. Today I'm going to be doing a review and a wear test on the seriously hyped up product by Revolution. This is the brand new Revolution Conceal and Define Foundation. This is supposed to be absolutely amazing, but we're going to see how this sits on a more mature skin today. So I'm going to get some on my skin, I'm going to get some on my mum's skin, we're going to see how it wears, we're going to see how it looks. Will it be drying? Who knows? If you want to find out, please keep watching. Okay, so before I start this review and wear test, somebody asked me the other day if I had drawn the competition winner for the Chanel mascara competition that I did not so long ago. The answer is yes, I have. The lucky competition winner was Hannah Evans, but she hasn't got back to me yet. So if you are Hannah Evans, you have won the competition. Congratulations. Please contact me on Instagram with your address details and the color choice that you would like in the mascara, and I will get that out to you ASAP. If you haven't contacted me by the end of September, I will have to draw another winner because we've got to have a winner. We just have to have a winner. So let's get on with the foundation review. Okay, so let me show you the product. It's actually quite a classy bottle, really chunky glass with a chrome lid. And when you take off the lid, you get a little doe foot applicator, which holds quite a bit of product on the end there. Now, not usually a big fan of doe foot applicators because I feel like they harbor bacteria, but that's just me. So this is the long awaited Revolution Conceal and Define Foundation. Unfortunately, you only get 23 mils worth of product in this bottle, which I think is a real shame. 30 mils is of course standard, but it is only nine pounds in the UK or $12 in the US. Now, if this did come in a 30 milliliter bottle, the price comparison would be around about 11 pounds 70 in the UK and about $15 in the US. So it is still really good value for money. This comes in 24 different shades and the spectrum is vast. This comes in the lightest of the light and the darkest of the dark. So well done for Evolution for doing that because it's well needed. This is the shade F5 for my skin. This is supposed to be really lightweight, very buildable coverage. So it goes from medium to extremely full coverage, but we're gonna test that out today. This is supposed to be really long lasting. They do say that if you powder it, it will last even longer, obviously. But the big kicker in this product is they say that this will not settle into any fine lines and it also won't cling to any dryness. If that is true, this is going to be a winner in my eyes. For a matte foundation to actually do that is going to be quite big news. So this says it's suitable for all skin types and all ages. We're also going to test that out today because although my mum's not sat right next to me, she is coming a little bit later on and I am going to try some of this out on her skin also. A really good thing also about this product is it's vegan, it's also cruelty free, it's paraben free and it's oil free. So if you have really oily skin and you suffer with using oils, then this might be the one for you. So let me just touch on the shade range one last time because I think it deserves another mention. It's absolutely unbelievable. But at the moment, this product is not available in any stores in the UK. I'm not sure if that's true in the US. It might be available in some stores over there. But at the moment in the UK, you can only order this online, which can be quite tricky picking your shade over the internet always quite difficult if you can't do a shade match. So I went online and you not only get a picture of the color of the foundation, which you generally get on most websites when they're talking about foundations, but it doesn't tend to be super accurate. You also get a description of the color of the foundation. So I know that F5 is for light skin tones with a golden undertone and that best matches my skin tone. So this is the one that I bought and I thought it was super helpful. So well done for Revolution for providing that to make it easier to pick your selection. So let's see what this looks like on the skin. Okay, so I've already applied all the serums to my skin and given that time to sink in. They are the serums that I normally use on my channel. If you are new to my channel, I will link the serums that I've used in the description box below. I am gonna put this on with the doe foot applicator just this once. But if I'm being completely honest, I will probably from now on apply it to the back of my hand and then apply it to my face using my fingers just because I don't want to get bacteria onto the doe foot applicator and 
let the bacteria grow in the actual product. A doe foot applicator is not ideal for me with me having quite problematic skin. So I will do it this way just this one time because it is quite, quite a nice little doe foot applicator. So I'm just going to apply it to my face. If you didn't hear me earlier on, this is the shade F5. I'm going to be using my 103 Define Buffing Brush from Zoeva as always. Favourite brush for doing foundation. The consistency of this is a lot thinner than the original Conceal and Define Concealer, which I found to be rather thick and really only worked on my skin if I put a couple of drops of oil in there as well. Otherwise I found it to go a little bit cakey. So it will be interesting to see how this differs and whether this goes cakey throughout the day as well. It's quite a nice colour match this on my skin. So this is really, really good coverage. It's very, very highly pigmented. I haven't applied too much product on there and the coverage is very, very good. I would say that this was a medium coverage. It goes on straight away like a medium coverage, but it does say that it can be built up to full coverage. It's already looking a little bit dry around my chin area, which I don't really like, but the rest of my face is actually looking really nice. It's not emphasizing any pores. In fact, it's slightly airbrushing the pores on my cheek area. It feels really nice. This has dried down extremely quickly. I feel like I can touch my face straight away, which you can't when you put a dewy or a more radiant finish foundation on your skin. So this has just been applied and I'm already able to touch my skin. It's got a slight velvety, powdery finish to it. It doesn't feel drying, but it's not looking great around here. So maybe I'll just try and build this up in a few areas to see whether it is buildable. I definitely don't want it to look cakey and nasty, so I'm not going to add any more around my chin area because that's already looking a little bit suspect. So we don't want to make that any worse, but I will just add a little bit more to see whether this is buildable. Oh, and it definitely is. You can see that straight away. This is an extremely buildable foundation. It's not gone streaky or patchy. It actually looks really nice. This really does look really nice on my skin. The only thing I don't like is these patches down here, which I mentioned earlier. But I think maybe whatever foundation I put on today, then those would be a little bit more noticeable. Hmm. I'm going to put the rest of my makeup on and I'll be right back. Okay, so that is the finished look for today and I'm absolutely loving it. I didn't realise I would love this foundation as much as I do. Like I said earlier on, it started to settle in some dry areas around my mouth. Over time, now I have had this foundation on for around about 20 minutes as I've done the rest of my makeup, and over time it's looked a lot less evident in my drier areas. Now, I've got a feeling this is going to be one of those foundations that looks better the longer you wear it. So we will see that later on because I am going to do quite a lengthy wear test on this, but at the moment, I'm really quite impressed with this foundation. It definitely feels lightweight on the skin, and newsflash, I have not set this foundation in place. So if you are one of those people that really struggles with adding powder to your face after foundation, if it makes your skin look a little bit dry, a little bit cakey, or a little bit crepey, then I believe this is going to be one of those foundations that you do not need to set in place. So that's a huge thumbs up. It does feel quite velvety on the skin. It's definitely sank into the skin and it's definitely airbrushed the pores that are on my cheeks. 
So even though I did say earlier on that this doesn't feel like a drying foundation, the lines on my forehead are a lot more evident than they would have been had I used a radiant, really hydrating foundation. That just comes part and parcel with having a matte foundation on your face. However, I do think this looks quite skin-like on my skin. I don't think it looks really heavy. It definitely doesn't look really cakey. However, this has oxidized at least one shade in the space of 20 minutes. So we'll see if it oxidizes a little bit more, but it's definitely darker than it was when I first applied the foundation to my face. So I'm gonna show you how this looks in natural lighting. I'm also gonna get some of this on my mum's skin when she arrives and I'll show you how that looks in natural lighting also so you can see how it sits on a more mature skin than I have. Hopefully it will be absolutely beautiful and she will love it, but we will see. I'll see y'all in a sec. Okay, so this is the finished look that we ended up with today for my mum. It looks a little bit cakey on my mum's skin and I didn't apply loads. It really did sink into the skin quite nicely and although we haven't powdered on top, it really does give a powdery texture to the skin like we've added far too much powder. I'm not sure if I like it, what do you think? No, it feels dry, it feels, yeah. A bit cakey. Feels and cakey. Every single fine line or wrinkle is more emphasized with this particular product on the skin. That's not good, is it? No. So maybe if we'd have added an oil underneath this foundation, like I use the Conceal and Define Concealer, I always apply a couple of drops of oil to that to make it suitable for my skin. Maybe we would have had a better result. We will try that out another day. It might not be tomorrow. We will try that out another day and I will update you in the description box below how we got on with that. But at the moment, and we have only just applied it, it's not the nicest foundation I've ever seen my mum in. You can definitely see the foundation. The skin doesn't look like skin. It looks like foundation. And that's a big no-no for me. I've seen you looking far nicer. Yeah. And I've got to keep this on all day? Yeah. Huh. Sorry. You don't look bad. Okay. You just don't look as nice as you usually do. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. So we're going to show you what this looks like in natural lighting and we will update you as the day goes on. See you all in a bit. Okay, so this is what the foundation looks like in natural lighting. It is quite bright today. It's not sunny, but it's quite bright. So excuse the squinting. As you can see, the line in my 11s -ers looks more prominent than it usually does. And also the lines on my forehead do look a little bit more prominent, but this doesn't look drying at all. It does look a little bit powdery, but it doesn't look drying. The lines around my mouth do look a little bit more prominent than they would usually do if I was wearing a more radiant foundation. But again, I've said that earlier on. But it does look quite nice in natural lighting. It's just such a shame that this has oxidized as badly as it has because although I blended it down my neck, you can seriously see the difference in color there. Not sure if it's just me, maybe it's just me. So where it settled into my dryness on my chin area is more or less gone now. It looked quite bad when I first put it on, but it's it's been maybe a good couple of hours now since I first applied it and it is looking a little bit better than it did before. I don't know, what do you think? I'll check in with you a little bit later on and tell you how this foundation's going. Okay, so this is what the foundation looks like in natural lighting. It looks very, very powdery and quite drying. If you look around here underneath my mum's nose, you can see a few fine lines, which I've never noticed before until she's applied this foundation. And also the lines around her mouth are a lot more evident than they would usually be. There has been some little bit of settling into the fine line on the chin, which this foundation promised not to do. And also the lines in between my mum's eyebrows are slightly more evident than they would usually be. So at the moment we are seriously not impressed with this foundation on a more mature skin. It's quite drying, even though it doesn't feel drying, it makes the skin look dry. But one good thing is we definitely didn't need to set this foundation in place. It really sank into the skin, but because of that, it's slightly looking a little bit cakey around certain areas. But we will update you as the day goes on. 
and let you know how it's wearing throughout the day. See you all in a bit. Okay, so this is the foundation after just after five hours. My mum's not going to do the full wear test because quite frankly, she wants to go home. <laughs> <laughs> so we both have had a really good look at this foundation and my mum really didn't like it when we first put the foundation on because it was quite drying on the face. It was quite powdery. It caked in a few areas and it did settle in some fine lines. Well, now we actually think it looks nicer, but we think that's because it doesn't look matte anymore. The natural oils have come through the skin and it's definitely a lot shinier than it was before, but they did say that it wasn't going to settle in any fine lines. And if you just separate those fine lines, Mum, we'll just move your fringe a little bit. You can see that it has, well maybe you can't, but I definitely can see that it has settled in the 11s as there. It's not majorly noticeable, but you can notice it. And there is no foundation left on the end of my mum's chin and it's a little bit cakey right here, but nothing major. All in all, it's not done badly, this foundation. It doesn't look awful. It's just not the best foundation that I've ever seen my mum in. Looks a little bit oily now rather than dewy. I definitely wouldn't be recommending this to my mum in future. I don't think you'll be wearing it again, will you, mum? No, I don't no. think so. Hi everybody, welcome back to the check-in. It's now been just over eight hours since I first applied this foundation to my face. And I'm at a bit of a loss where this foundation's concerned because it looked quite drying on my skin when I first applied it and I didn't particularly like it because it emphasised my fine lines and wrinkles. Even though it was quite flattering on the rest of my face, it did emphasise my fine lines and wrinkles, which I just thought, okay, well, that is just a matte foundation. That's what matte foundations do to me. And then my mum tried it and it looked not very nice on her skin. I've seen a lot better foundations on her skin and it wasn't very flattering. So I thought, fair enough. But now after eight hours, my skin is not only not matte anymore, but it's actually really shiny. The one good thing about this foundation is I've not had to touch it up throughout the day at all. But it has gone really shiny around my nose area, which is my problem area. And no dry patches around my mouth anymore, but it has gone a little bit cakey around my smile lines, which I don't like at all. So the reason why I say I'm at a bit of a loss is because I wouldn't recommend this to anybody with dry skin. Definitely no. It's a big no-no because it will look awful on your skin when you first apply it. But I also wouldn't recommend this for anybody with really oily skin because it will look awful when you've had it on for around about five hours. It goes really shiny, it will cake, it will congeal. So I don't really know who this foundation is actually good for. If you've got normal skin, super normal skin, this might work for you. But I actually thought earlier on that maybe this would work with an oil underneath it for anybody with dry skin. But at the end of the day, you'd probably look even oilier. So that might not work. Basically, I don't recommend this foundation. I wish I did because it's only £9 or $12, but... I'd rather buy the Maybelline Superstay 24 hour, which is matte to begin with, but a semi-sheen matte, and is much more flattering throughout the day. So I'm sorry this hasn't been more of a positive review because this foundation didn't need setting in place and I had high hopes for it. It also hasn't needed touching up throughout the day, but it looked a mess right at the very beginning on my mum's face because it made her look super dry and it dried all the way around here for me and now it just looks super oily. So I don't really know who this foundation would suit, but it's definitely not me. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please do give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, there is a watermark in this corner. If you click on it, it will take you through to my homepage where you can subscribe. Hope to see you all again soon. Bye.